Um, I have a slightly similar question, but not really similar, but on the same um, path. Um, what I was going to ask is, uh, what are there other projects that you find interesting aside from working on BTC pa BTC Pay Server that you think that would be worth, you know, your contribution? You know, I, you've made it you know, perfectly clear that you couldn't see yourself, you know, doing anything else. But are there projects in the problem in Lightning or, you know, Colored coins or anything within the Bitcoin or even crypto space at large? Who knows? You might love NFTs. You know that <laughs> things that might interest you that you think would be worth your time. Yeah, I'm actually involved in quite a few other projects as well, because as I said, uh, I'm very grateful for BTC Pay Server, but I also want to give space to other contributors to be able to grow, take the initiative and, you know, contribute a bit more. Uh, also, I find it very important that in this space that is rapidly growing, you don't tie yourself to a single project, because uh, even if we fund the BTC Pay Server contributors to BTC Pay Server Foundation, what we try to do is always find them something else to work on as well, either a side job or whatever, because, you know, maybe they won't spend full time on BTC Pay Server itself, but they will be able to connect with other people and get uh, you know, they won't be locked in the echo chamber because this space uh, changes quite rapidly. And unless you're connected to people constantly developing, uh, just, you know, learning from others as well, uh, it, it really doesn't make sense to lock yourself in a single project. And uh, I'm also involved in Bitcoin design, which uh, is basically a project uh, developing a free resource or a guideline for application builders who are building on top of Bitcoin. We are trying to create uh, resources for them to be able to build Bitcoin applications easier because, you know, if you have uh, examples of how people have built something, you have like uh, best practices and you have like uh, maybe mockups, uh, you have recommendations, it is easier for people to de develop a wallet, for example. So that's one, another project that I'm also involved uh, my um, half time, uh, not half time, but part time. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm not sport type of guy, but I do know what a half time is in football. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So, yeah. I, I try to get involved in as, in as many projects as I can. I try to, you know, connect with people all the time because I really think it is important. You cannot stay in the loop on what is going on. Like in Bitcoin, every single day something changes. There are projects popping up new improvement, improvements being made. And for in order for you to be up to date with that, you need to just talk to people, try to contribute, even if it's just one hour per week, go to any, you know, Telegram group, uh, Slack, wherever there are communities, just, you know, read, read what they are talking about. It's the best way to learn just like, you know, experimenting, talking to people and getting involved in things. And you'll find eventually a project that is, uh, you know, that, that you're passionate about and that, drags you into something that may be able to, you know, help you find a meaning same way it did for me. So yeah, I'm ranting a little bit at this point, but it's just, I'm trying to figure out if there are some specific projects. Like I really love LN URL. I think it is very undervalued project. I also love anything that is built by uh, Ben. Uh, ben, uh, he calls himself uh, BTC socialist, as far as I remember on Twitter, like he is also building uh, at an insane pace. I'm a big fan of a Lightning Address project, which allows people to send, you know, uh, payments through Lightning just uh, through same way uh, you would as you would through email. Like you have Lightning Address, which is like also a very big UX improvement to Bitcoin. So anything basically that improves UX around Bitcoin payments is something that will always drag me into it. That is, I think, the, the core of what I'm passionate about is, yeah. UX of Bitcoin payments. You mentioned making BTC pay easy to use for people. And uh, Luna Node, the one click installer, is probably the easiest way. That's how I launched my BTC pay server. And I know a bunch of other people that have used Luna Node also. How did that partnership come along? Yeah, that's, that is an interesting story. So we were trying to find at that time a VPS provider with, that accepts Bitcoin but doesn't use BitPay or whatever. And it was really hard for us to find the provider that is, has proper specs, that isn't expensive and that, you know, where we can deploy our test instances and test stuff. So we found out about Luna Node. I'm not even sure which provider they used at some point. It was quite a while ago, but we, you know, talked to them and the guy in charge, CEO or Fabian, I think is his name. He was very open, like, what are you guys developing? Oh, that seems interesting. And then 
we simply wait. What if we were able to create a web deployment that people can basically they don't even even to you know uh, go through command line and deploy a server. So what if they could do it through a you know graphical user interface and deploy a server. So that's uh, how we you know partnered with Luna Node in a way. But it's just uh, they basically did all the work. We just provided some technical help on what our users may you know need in order to deploy BTC pay server, but that script as well is open source. There are like a few other providers working on it. Like I also know Voltage, I think it's the name of the company. They're also like have a very easy, even maybe easier at this point than Luna node of deploying BTC pay server to people. And uh, quite honestly, we have like so many tutorials that even if you just know how to follow along a YouTube tutorial, you'll be able to deploy BTC pay server on any virtual private server in basically 10 minutes because we condense so much command line. It's just basically, I think it's at this point, just four lines of command line in order to deploy it on a server. So yeah, just being able to follow along with the specs of the server and then just follow a tutorial, it is easy. We, I personally and the team, we don't like like BTC pay server being tied to a single provider because yeah, that is the centralization. I'm very happy that lately, uh, there are many projects that are integrating BTC pay server like Umbrel, you have like um, MyNode and a, quite a few others that allow you to run BTC pay server because you can run BTC pay server in, even with a, ras a Raspberry Pi at home. So there are like all sorts of ways to deploy it and run it. So anything that decentralizes it is it's good because it strengthens basically. Imagine what would happen if Luna node died and there may be, <laughs> I don't know, 10,000 BTC pay server instances. I don't have a number. We don't really keep a track of those. There, we don't have a way of knowing it, but what would that would be pretty bad. So I'm happy that it is decentralizing lately. Uh, this is a bit of a change of topic now, but um, I, I saw that on, on Twitter that you were in. Um, I, I, are you involved with the Bitcoin Smiles project in El Salvador, or are you just a big fan of it? I couldn't, I couldn't uh, quite establish that for sure. Um, is my first question. I am the janitor of the Bitcoin Smiles project. I uh, help them set up the BTC Pay server, and yeah, I can talk about it. It's an awesome project. So, I think three months ago. Um, when this whole El Salvador saga was going on and we were all interested, like how are people accepting payments and me being interested in the Bitcoin payments UX, I just reached out to people on Twitter and I asked them like, hey, are you from El Salvador? Do you have like, uh, I don't know, one hour to chat with me about things and like 10 people applied, <laughs> they wanted to chat. So I was on a holiday um, with friends and girlfriend and they wanted to kill me because I was like, you know, talking to people uh, while they were at the beach but it, to me it was like just learning about El Salvador how people live there what do they use how do they use Bitcoin or what wallets do they use and among those people was uh, you know Enrique and he was very heartwarming guy he was awesome and we started talking and he talked to talk to me about his career, how he's a dentist in El Salvador, that, you know, people there lack basic health care, that there are so many people struggling and one thing I always love about open source, and that's I always ask questions like, okay, how what can we do to help? Like, let's let's do something to improve that. And we started, you know, going back and forth. And I was like, well, we have BTC Pay server. We do have like a built-in crowdfunding feature. Well, let's just deploy that. We don't need anything else. Like, let's just deploy it. To help tell your story, and maybe we can raise I don't know 100, 200 bucks to see you know what we can do. And then we started talking to people and they were like, well, you will probably raise more. Like people would donate. That seems like an interesting initiative. So we started talking and he started, you know, working on uh, technical type sort of things. Like he had a database of patients, elderly people who really never had a, a access to, you know, having their kids fixed or, you know, just didn't have basic uh, access to healthcare. So we started the crowdfunding campaign. It really went well. Bitcoin community really, uh, you know, recognized it mostly because, you know, there are quite a few people that help us, you know, push it through. Um, there were like five people involved in, you know, writing the content for it, uh, you know, taking photographs. I think it was a team of us five, me, Enrique, Alexa, uh, Patricia, and Zach. So five people involved in, you know, making this initiative happen. And in the past, BTC Pay Server tries to do once a year these sorts of initiatives because it allows us to see, you know, help somebody. And also we get a lot of feedback from people when they use BTC Pay Server to accept or uh, send payments. We always like find bugs and because it is like intensive use of BTC Pay Server. So yeah, it started as a simple idea and it really grew. Uh, at this point, I think 1.8 Bitcoin has been raised. 
which will allow us to really give uh, make a lot of people smile because it is an initiative where we're trying to raise funds for elderly people of El Salvador who are living on the outskirts, uh, basically in the villages with no you know, access to transportation, uh, electricity, water. And what we are trying to do is just bring smiles to those uh, people by Bitcoin, trying to show that Bitcoin isn't really about, you know, getting rich, uh, preserving wealth. To me, Bitcoin will always be about freedom and making people happy. So we are trying to make people smile and happy through the Bitcoin Smiles initiative. And I think currently it, it is really just started as a simple crowdfunding campaign. But at this point, we have people from all over the whole world contacting us. Hey, I want to volunteer my time to this organization. We were like, uh, this isn't really an organization. It is like just five of us, you know, deploying BTC Pay server, trying to do something good. But now uh, we'll see. We probably will, you know, set up a proper nonprofit there for people to be able really to, you know, send donations, send equipment as well, because it is really, it really made the quite a lot of, uh, you know, noise through the community and made a lot of people happy. And yeah, we currently, I think we treated five patients fully, which is awesome. And I think we'll be able to, you know, treat at least, I don't know, at this point, 60, 70 or even more. So we'll see in the next um, few months how impactful the project will be. It's pretty, pretty I know, amazing journey for BTC Pay Server. I remember, you know, Nicholas Doria's famous, I will end you, you know, speech to Bojavar. And um, <laughs> so I wanted to ask, what has been the, you know, what has been, you know, the biggest challenge for BTC Pay Server, you know, for you working on the project and for the project as, you know, as a whole, what has been the biggest challenge that you guys have had to overcome or that you guys are currently facing, you know, at the moment, you know, is, has it, does it have anything to do with, um, you know, getting people to actually use BTC, you know, pay server or, you know, something that, you know, from funding, what exactly are the challenges that you guys are facing? Yeah, there are like, it really depends on the, you know, time frame where we're looking at, like in the beginning, it was probably finding users who would use it. Like, why would anybody use a random project that nobody heard of? Later on, it was funding sustainability. Like, how do we help all of these people who are, who are helping, like uh, BTC Pay Server? How we can make their time worth? Because you know, they are really investing. They are spending more time on BTC Pay Server than they are on their regular jobs. And yeah, then we solved that with BTC Pay Server Foundation. And now, I think currently one of the biggest challenges is you know how do we uh, make BTC Pay Server easy enough for regular users like grandma grandpa mom and pop shops but at the same time flexible enough for developers to be able to you know build all sorts of crazy things so on the front end the challenge is that everything should be very minimal simple you just you know few clicks you're able to connect it to your woocommerce shopify or whatever and you're able to receive payments um, you can invoice clients and stuff like that but how do we enable developers to build all of those crazy things and you know um, maybe even plugins, because recently we've added plugin functionality into BTC Pay Server that will allow people to extend its use cases even more. Like if you're a developer, there is this core software that's being devel developed, and then you have all sorts of extensions that you can build in order to, you know, improve its functionality. So that's like, I think currently that is our biggest challenge, um, just figuring out how all of these things can be very simple and how we can reach both of uh, those goals, which seems both of those goals seem quite different like how can you cater to the end user which is not tech savvy and then how you uh, can make software apis and everything um so flexible that you know developers can build entire businesses on top of vtc pay server basically that's what i think is the biggest challenge and then there is also like I'm not sure if you guys know, but BTC Pay Server isn't like if you're an end user, you can deploy it and accept Bitcoin payments. What you can do is onboard thousands of your friends to your server. So basically, you're in a way becoming a you know, payment processor for your local community. You can allow other people to simply register on your website and you're becoming payment processor, allowing them not to be able to you know, take care of the server uptime or whatever there, there else might be DDoS attacks or whatever. So... Um, we are also trying to see how we can, you know, give incentives to those people running those instances. We call them third-party hosts, how we can allow it easier for them to onboard people. And we are developing some prototypes of mobile application that will allow people to connect to their instance and BTC-based servers. So 
quite a lot of challenges and it, it is never boring, I guess, in our community. There is like all sorts of things. And then they, there you have Lightning Network. How do we scale that? How can, you know, all these people deploying uh, Lightning nodes, how we can make them get inbound liquidity? You know, you guys at B3 feel you do sell inbound liquidity. There are quite a few other providers and how do we connect all of that? How do we onboard people to this network? Those are some of the challenges that are on top of my head when it comes to, you know, maybe next year or so that we still haven't figured out, but I'm confident at some point we will. I uh, I just wanted to ask something that was a little bit more out there and um, a little bit more, I guess, like something that's quite like uh, topical recently. Uh, and that was the point of... Uh, like people, uh, Bitcoin on Twitter, I guess. Um, it, se- it seems to me that like uh, there's this kind of recent uh, argument, I guess, about Bitcoin maximalism and like toxicity and, and things like that. So you've got like, uh, I think it was Udi Verheim said that um, he wasn't a fan of it and all this kind of stuff. And I, I guess I didn't, I didn't know. I, I, what I wanted to ask you was like, hey, you've got your fingers in a lot of pies. Like you're dealing with a lot of different things that are like decent, projects like the btc pay server bitcoin design um bitcoin smiles they're, they're, they're quite like uh, ambitious and i guess wholesome is probably a good term for it, i guess projects that are doing good things for the world so i didn't know what your view was on like hey how how much does how i guess like and, and you can feel free to decline to answer but like how much do, do you think like um how much good do you think like people uh, maximalists on Twitter do, I guess, for Bitcoin? Like, cause uh, I guess it's like a, this hotly debated thing of if it puts people off or brings them in, or um, I, I guess you're making such a big impact in these projects you're involved in. I didn't know what you thought about the impact of, yeah, I guess like maximalism and, and, and kind of influences and stuff on, on Twitter um, when it comes to Bitcoin and people who are new. Yeah. I guess there are always two sides of the story. Like I think, uh, they are doing important work protecting people from scams and getting their money lost. Like, I guess if there wasn't for Bitcoin Twitter, I may have even wandered into the altcoin, you know, uh, Ethereum or whatever. I've never actually had a time to even research those projects because Bitcoin was so exciting for me. Uh, lots of things going on. So I really don't use any of those. Or don't, but at the same time, I am always for freedom of choice and giving people the ability to do whatever they want to do. So if there are people wanting to develop something, you know, I don't know, and they have use case for it, why don't allow it to them to, you know, do whatever they want. So I guess those toxic debates uh, can be beneficial for both sides, but they're also like, uh, you know, doing like quite a lot of heated debates. I try to stay away from the drama, to be honest. Uh, I'm more interested into connecting really with people who build than people who talk. But I don't say like that people who talk uh, aren't beneficial for this uh, community of ours as well, because, you know, they try to protect newbies basically. But yeah, some of them also do it for, you know, clicks, likes, retweets or whatever. So always try to be cautious, you know, when evaluating uh, a standpoint where somebody's coming from. So yeah, if I can just give advice, one advice about that is just try to connect with people who are really building impactful things, doing also all sorts of cool things. Because if you end up, you know, yelling on Twitter, you are missing out on quite a lot of development being built and quite a lot of ideas and really cool people. Because yeah, you have vocal mi- minority on Twitter yelling, but there is like a quite a lot of people who don't get uh, get uh, the, the same attention that they deserve. Um, and they are like doing some really awesome work in this space. So yeah, for me, I just look, look at it as an entertainment. Whenever I'm bored, I go to either I, you know, laugh. Yeah, it's fun, memes and all, all sorts of stuff. But at the end of the day, it also allows me to connect with the product makers, people who have interesting ideas and basically, you know, connect uh, with like-minded individuals in this industry. So to me, that is even more interesting. And if you can find a way to use Twitter in that way, it would be more beneficial than you're trying to yell at each other, I guess. I just wanted to go back to the plugins that you mentioned. Do you guys envision like a WordPress style ecosystem of, of plugins being developed for BTC Pay? Yeah, that is exactly an idea. That's a great point. We do, we try to refer to it as BTC Pay Server becoming the WordPress for Bitcoin payments. Like um, that on one way brings a lot of security problems because if you have developers, you know, developing 
we do need to find figure out the system and that's why it is uh, it's still uh, in beta for us we we'll, we are still tinkering how we can make all of this secure like abstract the wallets hot wallets and whatnot from the plugins itself and yeah because at some point you'll have people developing maybe malicious plugins and try to steal funds from the wallets so we try to you know secure all of that and it is still like early days of plugins uh, but yeah the idea is to have basically a free marketplace where people can build ad features while the core team can stay focused on stability of the software meaning that the core software will always be, be about accepting Bitcoin payments. But if you want to use BTC pay server, I don't know, as something else, like uh, maybe there is some other, I, I cannot think of a use case at this moment, but there are like people constantly requesting features from us. And we really just want to focus on our mission, being able to have a stable software while others can maybe make money by developing those plugins or you know, just develop plugins without waiting for us to review those, uh, you know, uh, features because people come to our GitHub, they do a pull request and say, hey, add this feature to BTC Pacer. And then the way we approach it is, is it really useful for majority of our users or is it really just useful for this one guy who, this, who just wants to do this one specific thing? And the, if the answer is, you know, one specific thing, then we, hey, sorry, but we, this really doesn't benefit majority of our users. It is really not something we would like to implement because it would clutter the experience for other people. So, you know, you can develop a plugin and use it without having to fork BTC Pay server. So that is our idea, trying to solve all of those problems. But yeah, there are lots of uh, issues with that as well, but we are still figuring things out. Okay.